For many timeshare owners, it feels like your timeshare dues are in the driver's seat. They drive you to go to work so you can pay them off every year. The irony is, you're so busy working, you may not find time to take a vacation. And those dues just keep coming year after year. And it can be upsetting to realize you're paying for something you may not even be using. But let me ask you this. Would you like to be in the driver's seat? Are you ready to put those dues to work for you so your timeshare not only pays for itself, but makes you a profit year after year? If so, then let me show you how this works. I look at my timeshare like an investment. If I consider my dues as the amount of money I'm investing each year, I want to know how much of a return I'm getting on my money. And I can measure this as a dollar amount or as a percent return on my investment, or what investors refer to as ROI, return on investment. Here's the simple formula to use. Just enter your numbers to see how well your timeshare investment is performing, where income is the amount of rental income you make from each booking when you rent it to a guest, and expense is the amount of money it took to control that booking. For example, I pay $1,000 in timeshare dues each year. Some call them membership fees or HOA fees, but it's whatever amount you have to pay each year, not including any loan payments you may still be making. And in exchange, the timeshare gives me seven nights. Ironically, this is what the timeshare refers to as my free week, which just means I don't have to pay any more money when I try to book it. And if I rent my free week for $250 per night, now I've made $1,750 which means I've gotten my initial $1,000 investment back, plus I'm left with some extra spending money. That's a win-win in my book because now my timeshare is free and paying for itself. And if I want to measure my income in terms of ROI, it's a 75% return on my investment. Now my timeshare is working for me and not the other way around. And think about this. Where else can you get this kind of return on your investments? I mean, a CD with the bank is paying less than 1% annually, right? And if you invest in a mutual fund, annual returns average out to about 12%. So when you make a 75% return on your timeshare in a week, now you can see why I say that your timeshare may be the best investment you've ever made. But that's not all. Renting your free week is just the beginning. You can actually increase your income in two ways. You can either raise your nightly rate or rent more often. And that's what my timeshare rental system is all about, teaching timeshare owners how to increase both of those numbers. So how can we increase your timeshare rental income? To raise your nightly rate means strategically positioning your booking during dates with incredibly high demand. Because when demand is higher, people are willing to pay more to rent your place. And the other way you can increase your income is by renting more often. And you may be saying, but Sue, I only get seven nights per year. After I've used them up, that's it. But the truth is, you have access to more inventory than you may realize. See, after I've used my free week, my timeshare wants me to keep coming back and booking more trips. And I can book as many of these bonus nights as I want for an incredibly affordable nightly rate. And by that, I mean less than $100 per night. And that's where the unlimited upside potential comes in. What many timeshare owners aren't aware of is that once you're an owner and you have your foot in the door, then the timeshare wants you to keep coming back so they have other programs you can access. And if those programs allow you to transfer a reservation into the name of a guest, then you have everything you need to grow and scale your timeshare rental system. So the truth is, you don't need to keep buying more timeshares or upgrading because all you really need is one good timeshare to make a steady income throughout the year. And you've probably heard the phrase, no risk, no reward, right? Well, on the investment spectrum, timeshares are actually the least risky and have the highest steady returns. So how do we lower the risk and increase our income? We do this by stacking the odds in our favor. By using my fixed date strategy, of all the ways to rent a timeshare, the fixed date strategy ensures that you get the highest reward with the lowest risk. The fixed date strategy is based on the principle of putting yourself in the way of the money by positioning your listing where it will have the best chance of a guest finding it. 
someone who not only wants to book it, but who's also willing to pay top dollar for it because it's one of those bucket list moments where money is no object. And when you do this right, there is so much demand and competition among the guests that want to stay at your timeshare that it gives you an unfair advantage for getting your timeshare booked practically 100% of the time. So how does this strategy eliminate risk and increase returns? Well, it eliminates the risk of no one finding your listing by posting it on Airbnb. Because if guests can't find it, they can't book it. There are many websites out there to post a timeshare for rent, but the best one that I've found is Airbnb, hands down. It also eliminates the risk of the timeshare not having the dates available by booking the dates with the timeshare first. Now, why is this important? Because we know that the biggest problem is when you try to book dates with the timeshare and they usually aren't available. It's competitive, right? And if you can't control and book the timeshare's inventory, you can't rent it out. So the only way to ensure that the dates are available when you rent them to a guest is to book them with the timeshare first and lock them in. And it eliminates the risk of trying to compete on price with those big online travel agencies by targeting a specific guest who's going to this bucket list event and they're willing to pay higher nightly rates. Because if you try to compete on price, you can't make a profit. But if you underpromise and overdeliver, you can charge a higher nightly rate based on the value you're delivering to your ideal guest. And then the sky is the limit. And once you've gone through the entire four-phase timeshare rental process at least one time, then you'll be ready to scale your timeshare rental system. And the beauty of my fixed date strategy is that it allows you to scale a timeshare rental system without getting flagged for commercial use because your bookings are so laser focused that you stay under the timeshare's radar. Plus, after you've gone through the entire process once, you'll not only know what questions to ask, but where to find the answers and what to do with that information once you understand its implications. So now you can apply these same principles to all the other programs that the timeshare gives you access to. And when you learn how to navigate your timeshare's rules, you can name your price using my timeshare ROI calculator. So if you're ready to turn your timeshare into an income producing asset, then the first thing you need to do is get that first booking under your belt so you can understand the process, make some money with your timeshare, prove to yourself that this works, and then you'll be ready to scale. And if you'd like some help with that, just click the link in the description below to learn more. This is Sue Oyuela wishing you all the best and timeshare rental success. Bye for now.